Hi, everyone. Prof Gordon here from Exam Success. And I've been getting a lot of questions about the industry credentials and what you need and what they're used for. So I wanted to create a video where we'll talk briefly about these. Uh, I've got I've highlighted a couple here. And then I want to show you some job uh, opportunities where these are applicable. So it's really uh, leading from your education towards your career development. So we're talking about the Canadian financial uh, in industry, the financial services industry, as some people refer to it. So this could encompass uh, positions such as financial planners, or you could be an investment representative, you could be a client service representative, you could be a, an associate planner, you can be an assistant. There's many different titles. Uh, those are, uh, you know, dealing with the public, front office type of positions, mainly sales. So you can think about that. This business is, is definitely about getting out, establishing relationships with clients and building your business. There's also back office jobs, trading and uh, compliance and other areas. I'm not going to get into such detail on those, but uh, I wanted to focus more on the front office, dealing with the retail uh, uh, clients. So uh, you notice that I have a few designations here. The first one is the Canadian Securities course, the CSC. And I would think that this would be your first course that you'd want to complete. This is going to help you to break into the industry. Once you have completed even just the first exam, I think that your attractiveness to employers increases uh, by a large amount. And you have opportunities now to work at banks, uh, or mutual fund companies or investment firms. Once you complete the Canadian Securities course, uh, now uh, you you depending upon where you end up, if it's at a bank or at a, at a investment firm, you may need to then carry on and, and get your Conducts and Practices Handbook uh, course, the CPH. The two of these together will give you your uh, ability to be registered and uh, licensed to provide advice as a registered representative. And now uh, you become quite an attractive candidate to uh, investment firms, brokerages, uh, where you have financial planners who have an established clientele, and they may be looking for some support or additional uh, people to add to their team. So those are the two that you're probably going to need to complete regardless of where you land in the industry. So keep thinking about those two. Now, the other two that are on this list here are the Wealth Management Essentials, the WME, and the CFP, the Certified Financial Planners designation. Now, the Wealth Management Essentials is required if you are going to be licensed as an investment advisor uh, working at a, an IROC firm. If you don't know what IROC means, let me know in the comments and I'll tell you, okay? Uh, for the Canadian industry, we're talking about being registered and being able to provide advice and sell stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, you will need to complete your Canadian Securities course, the Conducts and Practices Handbook course, and then the Wealth Management Essentials course, and that will allow you to be registered. Uh, and now you can actually start your own business. You can work for a firm like RBC or a, a, a TD, for example, or Investors Group. Now, circulating all around this is the CFP designation, and this is really for marketing. This is for marketing yourself to get a job or marketing to get clients. It's not a license, and so there, there's no regulatory requirement to have your CFP, but you're going to find as you progress in your career, if you want to jump into that role as a financial planner, then most firms will be seeking the CFP designation. So uh, that's a, a must have if you're going down this route. Now, we can take a look at some uh, examples from the industry. And here I've pulled up a couple of job uh, postings and we can see the required credentials. So the first one here is a financial planner, okay? And this is with uh, BMO. And uh, if we come and we look at the, uh, the requirements for the job, you scroll down, you will see that they're going to ask you for 
three to five years of experience, okay, that's fine. The CFP designation or one of these others, the PFP, okay, uh, I would, you notice I didn't put that up there. If you're going to go for a financial planning designation, then the CFP is what you want to go after. That has the most broad appeal and recognition. The wealth management essentials, you're going to need that to be registered, okay, as I had pointed out. Uh, are you going to need to go for any of these uh, PFP or financial planning one and two? Like I said, these are nice to have, but if you have the other courses that I've mentioned, then you've got the uh, the credentials to be able to jump into this role here as a, a financial planner. So you can see what they're asking for in, in their in their qualifications here. Now, if we look at another role, it, it is it is an associate. And as an associate, you are now going to be working as part of a team. And this is at RBC Dominion Security. So there are uh, probably a group of financial planners and they're expanding their business and they now need some support. So if you notice the credentials that are required for this type of position, your Canadian Securities course and your Conducts and Practices Handbook course. So they're going to want you to be licensed so that you can talk with the clients. Are you going to be giving them advice? No, that will be the financial planner's uh, uh, job, but you're going to be handling telephone calls from the clients and you're going to be doing some marketing towards them or client servicing uh, type of activities. And, uh, and so having these completed will make you a strong candidate uh, for this type of position. And this is with an investment firm, RBC Dominion Securities. Now, uh, this is different from, if we look at this uh, next position, this is a banking advisor. It's located in Markham, Ontario. And this is working in RBC, but it's on the banking side in a retail branch. So you're going to be going into a bank branch and you are going to be uh, giving uh, advice or uh, strategies to clients. And uh, so if you notice uh, the uh, skills that you must have here, well, either the investment funds, which is a mutual funds uh, uh, course, I didn't mention that as well. If you're going to break into this industry, I think you must do the Canadian Securities course. Okay, that's going to give you the most broad appeal. So you're licensed here to sell mutual funds only. And if you're working in a bank branch, then you're most likely going to be giving advice uh, for clients uh, in terms of their uh, savings products, you know, GICs, term deposits, and mutual funds, you're, you're probably not going to get into specific stock bonds or other type of investments. You would make a referral to a planner over at, uh, at RBC, for example. There may be a planner who deals with this branch. But you can see the difference in terms of the, uh, the requirements. This is a nice position to start off your career. It's a risk-free position. You get paid a salary. Eh? The, you deal with clients. You learn the industry. You learn the language. And you can gain confidence to then move into that financial planner's uh, role. Now, uh, I also mentioned that there's other uh, aspects of this industry, you know, where maybe you don't want to be the financial planner, you want to just be in a support role. So an administrative assistant, okay, so now if I drop down to the credentials that are required here, and uh, you will see uh, that uh, this, uh, this is simply your communication skills. Okay, you're dealing with clients and uh, you want to be, they want someone who's personable to give their clients a positive experience. And it's under the nice to have category where it says it's nice to have the, C, the, the Canadian Securities course and the Conducts and Practices uh, Handbook course. Okay, and uh, those are nice to have because if you do have those, then you can be given more responsibility and you can now uh, um, give uh, stock quotes uh, to clients. You can execute a trade if they have instructions. Uh, you can become licensed. Okay. And, uh, and so it makes you a more desirable candidate. But an administrative assistant is also a, a low risk, no risk position because you're getting paid a salary, you're supporting the financial planners, 
and you get to learn the business and you get to learn how to run it properly, which I think is an excellent way to break in to this business and, uh, and gain experience and gain confidence. So uh, if you're looking to build a career as a financial planner, it's difficult to jump in uh, without a, a, a strong pipeline of prospects and become a financial planner. It's a, probably a better route if you start off as an associate or as, uh, as an administrative assistant and build your skills from there. Now, there's other positions also. I'll mention them briefly. You know, this is an example of a trader uh, at Scotiabank. OK, and uh, you are executing transactions. That's all you're doing. If I scroll down, uh, this is working at an asset management firm, an investment firm, and uh, you need to be licensed to be able to execute these trades. You're not making any recommendations. OK, uh, and uh, and as I, I come down, uh, OK, so completion of the Canadian securities course, OK, or equivalent. OK, they want someone in the CFA program. I mean, this is, again, you know, maybe there may be some analytics, uh, you know, that they're anticipating you may handle. But in order to execute the trades, OK, again, you can see that the Canadian securities course is right there. Uh, you know, you can continue on. There's there's uh, different roles at different firms. This is at CIBC. They call their 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 planners that are in the branch financial services representatives. And this is a level one representative. And uh, if you scroll down again to the uh, qualifications and such, then it, it 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 tells us it tells us that uh, uh, you need to be uh, licensed right here. It says Canadian Securities Course or Mutual Fund License. All right, so Canadian Securities Course is the one that I would go for because it gives you the most broad appeal. And again, this is a risk-free position where you get paid a nice salary and you have the opportunity to work with clients and build your confidence. And uh, that way you can end up building yourself uh, into a rewarding career in the financial services industry. So if we just flip back and go uh, and summarize what we're talking about, I think that this industry can be described uh, in terms of a pyramid. Okay? And I always think about it as at the top of the pyramid is the financial planner. If, if you get into a role as a financial planner, you have an opportunity to build a business and your earnings potentials is unlimited because you can continue to add clients and you can continue to increase your assets under administration and increase the uh, fees and the revenue that you generate. So leading towards the financial planning positions are these support roles, the administrative positions or the assistants, or even working at a bank branch, as we were talking about, as a financial services representative or as a uh, planner within the bank branch. You're going to be paid a salary, so it's not, uh, 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 the earnings potential is not as high as it would be if you were your own uh, full service financial planner. So I hope this gives you a good idea of, you know, where the industry, you know, a little bit about the industry setup, the positions that are there, the qualifications that you need. These courses are expensive. Uh, so they are an investment in yourself. I think that the investment is well worth it. And there are uh, many sources uh, which are available to help you fund these opportunities. Uh, there's special scholarships offered from several institutions, which I'll talk about in another video. So I hope you found this helpful. And as always, you know, I'm here to help. If you have any questions about any of these financial industry exams, please feel free to reach out. Thanks for watching.